Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. So today we are going to be talking about camera settings for the a7 III and the a7R III for weddings. This is something I see getting brought up uh, occasionally online. People are just asking for suggestions on how to set up their cameras to do weddings. So I figured I'd walk you guys through how I have mine set up and then that way you guys can use this as a starting point in terms of uh, getting your cameras configured for, for photographing weddings, engagements, or whatever else that you're doing. Now, let me just say ahead of time that there's really no right or wrong way to set up your camera. Uh, it's really all a matter of which features and settings you need to get to the most and the quickest and, and whatnot for your workflow and the way you shoot. But if you're just getting into Sony's or weddings, then this should be a good jumping off point for you in terms of getting your a7 III or your a7R III um, configured to, uh, to photograph weddings. So let's go ahead and jump on over to the camera. I'll walk you through how I have mine set up and walk you through some of the reasoning behind why I do what I do. Um, so let's go ahead and jump on over to the camera. All right guys, so uh, here we are on the a7R III. Now my a7 III and my R III are both set up basically exactly the same way. So there's really no difference between them. Um, so regardless of what camera you're on, uh, whether it's the a7 III or the R3, uh, the settings should be, should all still apply to you. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is kind of go through the menu system here and walk you through bit by bit as far as how this is set up. Um, so first thing here on the very first tab, first menu, uh, we've got file format. I've got raw and JPEG. Um, I do shoot raw and JPEG at weddings. So I'll do raw to one card and JPEG to the second. <clears throat> now there's a reason why I do that. Um, one, I want redundant copies of the images, right? So I've got the two uh, sets of images, each being written to separate cards. That way, if one card fails, I've got the images on the other. Now, some people would say, well, why aren't you writing raw to both? And uh, I used to, but uh, something I've been doing to make my life a little bit more uh, convenient is I shoot the JPEGs to the second card so that when I get home from a wedding, uh, before I go to bed that night, what I'll do is I'll take the raw images from that card and I'll upload them to another hard drive. That way I've got that immediately backed up at home. And then I take the JPEG images and I immediately upload those to my cloud storage so that that way I've immediately got those uploaded to the cloud. Otherwise, what I would have to do is import everything into, say, Lightroom and then export all the JPEGs and then I could upload them to the cloud and that would just be a couple extra steps. And when it's late at night and you want to go to bed, um, that takes quite a bit of time. So by just having everything set up <clears throat> already in the camera to do raw and JPEG, it makes that a little bit easier. Uh, moving on, so raw file type I've got compressed. So you, by, I think, factory standards, it comes with uncompressed as the, the basic setting there. I change it to compressed. Uh, I don't find there's much of a quality loss between compressed and uncompressed. Uh, you will lose a little, bit, a little bit of dynamic range, but the compressed files still uh, look really, really good. You still get a lot of dynamic range to work with as far as the raw files, and you save about half the file size. So um, it just really helps to not shoot through memory cards or hard drives at home. So compressed raw is what I do. JPEG quality is set to extra fine, which is the highest quality. Um, again, because I'm shooting raw and JPEG, I'm using JPEGs as part of my backup uh, solution. So if I ever do need to edit from those, uh, I wanna make sure I've got the most quality as possible from those JPEGs. And then again, likewise with JPEG image size, it's set the large. Again, I wanna make sure I'm getting the, the highest quality from those JPEGs. If I ever do need to use them, aspect ratio three to two, that's pretty, pretty much um, goes without saying. Uh, long exposure noise reduction off. High ISO noise reduction normal, color space sRGB, uh, drive mode, single shooting, but we'll get more into some of that stuff later. That's really all there is on that screen. Um, we can skip that one. Um, as far as autofocus um, and continuous AF, again, we'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, I don't shoot an AF single very often, but it is set to um, AF priority. It's already set for AF continuous is balanced. Focus area, we'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, and then this one at the bottom here, this uh, kind of weird, confusing blurb of letters, uh, what it basically stands for is switch vertical horizontal autofocus area. That's what that means um, as far as what it does it do. Um, essentially what it allows you to do is it, has, it allows you to set two different locations for your AF area um, guide, depending on whether or not you're in vertical or horizontal mode. So let's say you wanted your um, your AF area point to be in the upper right hand corner when you're in horizontal. Well, obviously if you take your camera and you make it vertical, now it's gonna be in the upper left hand corner. So what you can do is you can just use your thumb stick or whatever and move that area point over to the right hand side and then it'll set that for the next time it goes to vertical. So when you go back to horizontal, it'll still be in the upper right. And then when you go back to vertical, it'll automatically move it to the upper right. So that way, if that's gonna be where your framing is going to be for every single shot, regardless of horizontal or vertical, it just saves you quite a bit of time not having 
having to move the autofocus point around if you need it to be in the same location or different locations, whatever whatever you really needed to be. I'll do maybe some more about that here in a minute. But um, anyway, so that's that's set to AF point only. By default, it's off. And then you can also do AF point and AF area. I'll, I'll maybe make a separate video talking about this. I feel like this could be its own five or 10 minute video. Um, but anyway, AF point only for that. Um, AF2, AF illuminator is off. That's the little light in the very front that shines if it's having trouble focusing in low light. I don't have any issues with either of these cameras in low light and focusing, so it's set to off. Um, center lock on AF, that's, well, I don't really use it very often, if ever. Um, face eye AF set. <clears throat> um, obviously, eye priority and face priority is on. Subject detection human and the bottom two don't really matter as much. Um, but that's what I've got set there. AF track sensitivity three standard and then AF with shutter is on. I don't do back button focus. If you did want to do back button focus on these cameras, this is where you'd go and delink the uh, autofocus from the shutter button. You would just change that to off and then you would just have to change your AF on to whatever button you want it to be. Usually the AF on button up here, but uh, that would be up to you. Um, this next page pre autofocus, not something I really use. And then the rest of this isn't really anything I use either. Um, we can skip this page. Um, exposure, uh, really not much to talk about on this on this page. Um, obviously, if you wanted to set your ISO, you could do it through here. Metering mode is multi, face priority, and multimeters on. Um, but that's all default, I do believe. Spot metering point is just the center, but I don't really do spot metering. Um, auto exposure. Um, lock with shutter is at the auto. Not something I really mess with. Um, okay, so on the flash page, the first mode you would be in here is flash fill or fill flash. This is by default what it's going to be set to um, if you don't have any like other like pop-up flashes or any other Sony stuff on here. So this is what it's going to be set to is fill flash. That's also essentially the same thing as like first curtain uh, sync flash or first curtain flash. So that's what, uh, that's what that is. Now, if you did want to do something like second curtain sync or rear curtain sync, that's where you would do this is in this menu as well. That would be down here. Um, for weddings, you may want to use rear curtain sync if you want to do like the, the crazy like zigzaggy lights in the background during the reception effect. Some people will want to change their flash sync to rear curtain sync or second curtain sync in order to make sure that they're the subject, the person that they're photographing is sharp um, rather than like ghosting or with the lights over their face. So that's where you would do that. Um, but anyways, that's that's enough of that. So flash mode fill flash is what you're gonna wanna be on for most of most of your day. Um, exposure compensation set ambient and flash. I think that's already standard by default, um, but nonetheless, that's what I use. Uh, moving on, white balance, we'll talk more about that later. Priority set, standard. Uh, dynamic range optimization, I just have it set to this DRO auto. I don't really I don't really do anything with that, and that's just kind of what it is, and I think it only really applies to the, uh, the JPEGs anyway. Creative style standard, and then picture profiles off. I don't really mess with that unless it's for video, but that could be another video as well. Um, in a, in its own uh, magnif magnification time is no limit. If, if I zoom in, I want to stay zoomed in and poke around. Initial focus magnification is 1x. Um, and then AF autofocus and focus magnification um, is set to on. And manual, face, manual focus assist is also on. So manual focus assist, what that basically does, as soon as you go to manually focus, it'll zoom in on whatever, um, whatever part of the frame you're currently focused on. And then it'll go ahead and give you some help there. Peaking settings um, on, whoops, get back out of there. Peaking setting is set to on, peaking level is mid, peaking color white. Uh, you can change that color to I think red and yellow. Yeah, so if you wanna do that, you can do that in there, but I just have it mid and white. Not really much to say about that. <clears throat> Anti-flicker shooting I actually have off. Some people turn it on, that way it'll help in, in situations where you've got like lighting that's flashing, um, sometimes with LED lights and whatnot, it'll help with that. Um, and then the rest of that I can ignore. Movie mode, we're gonna skip. Um, again, that could be a separate video if we wanna talk about movie settings. Um, so shutter, we've got silent shootings currently off. Um, again, obviously that's something to turn on as needed. Electronic front curtain shutter. Uh, so this is something that seems to get a lot of debate online. Um, one of the things I've noticed um, with people who seem to have shutter issues with their A7 III or A7 R3, it seems like from what I can tell, and this isn't like a, a scientific experiment or anything like that, but it seems to me like a lot of people who are having issues with shutter um, failures are turning the electronic front curtain shutter off. Um, I've always left it on and I'm pretty sure it's on by default. Um, I recommend leaving it on. You're not going to very often run into issues by leaving it on. The only times when you might run into an issue is if you're using like high speed sync flash or if you're using high shutter speeds with like low light conditions and you've got 
like ambient, uh, like artificial light near you, something like an LED, um, then you might run into some banding issues. Um, if you're not running into those issues, then I just recommend leaving it on. And again, like I leave it on like 99.8% of the time. I very, 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 very rarely ever have an issue with it. So my recommendation would just be to leave it on. Okay, so moving on, uh, if we come down here, we have release without card. I have that set to disable. So what that basically does is it doesn't allow you to take a photo unless you have a memory card in your camera. Um, so again, the, for, this is like a safeguard for weddings. The last thing you wanna do is show up to a wedding and start photographing things and find out an hour into your wedding day that you actually weren't actually saving any, any photos because you didn't have a memory card in. Now granted, you're gonna have a big flashing no card in the upper left-hand corner of your camera and you should absolutely 100% notice that. And before any wedding day, you should be like double, triple checking your camera to make sure all your settings are right. And you've got memory cards in both slots and all your, I mean, you should be going through those checks. Uh, but this is just one more safeguard to ensure that no matter what happens, I cannot possibly take a photo on this camera unless there's a memory card inside of the camera. So it's a little bit of a safeguard there. Uh, moving on, nothing to talk about on that page. Um, page six here, display button. Um, this is just for what is allowed to be displayed when you cycle through your viewfinder or your LCD. Not really much to say there. I'm pretty sure I just have these set by default, but if you know for a fact you don't want any of these ever to show up in your history or show up in your viewfinder or your LCD, you can go and turn them on or off. Um, but I'm pretty sure I just have these set as standard and then obviously the viewfinder as well, you can do the same thing. Um, finder monitor auto, that's just for switching back and forth. So obviously if you hold over the, uh, the sensor there, it'll automatically switch back and forth. If you wanted to set it manually, just have the viewfinder on all the time or the LCD on all the time, you could do that. Some people used to do that back in the day when the battery life wasn't so great, they would turn the viewfinder off because it would drain a lot of power. But on these A7Ies, A7R3s, the battery is really good. You don't need to bother with that. <clears throat> uh, finder frame rate is set to standard. You can also set it to high. Um, again, I, I haven't really never noticed a big difference between doing that, but it technically I think will drain your battery a little bit quicker. Uh, zebras, these are something I do use on a wedding day and for photography. For me, I'm really um, concerned about preserving highlights if I can. Uh, so I like, I like to have that notification if I'm starting to blow things out, especially on a wedding day when things are happening very quickly, it's easy to maybe miss something. Um, so as far as the settings, I've got a custom setting here for standard and range. Standard is set to 101, range is set to plus or minus three. For me, I find that this gives me um, zebras if I'm uh, more than, or let's rephrase that. So for me, the zebras go off when I'm about two thirds of a stop underexposed, which is right where I wanna be. Ideally, I don't want the zebras in my frame because they're a little bit annoying to look at. So I have them set so they turn off right where I want my exposure to be in most circumstances. And for me, that's usually about two thirds of a stop underexposed. And I usually find that's enough to really preserve my highlights. Um, so that's what I do there. Um, and again, I think that's a really useful tool for a digital camera. Obviously with film, you want to kind of preserve the shadows, but with digital, it's the opposite. You really want to make sure you're preserving those highlights. And I tend to shoot a little bit darker and moodier anyway, so I'd rather preserve the highlights uh, and lose a little bit of detail in the shadows. But anyways, um, grid line, rules of third, uh, or rule of third. Uh, anything more than that, I feel like it gets a little bit too, cluster, too, uh, too cluttered on the screen. So rule of thirds is good enough for me, um, and that's fine. So moving on. Live view display setting effect is set to on. I think that's the default, and I'm pretty sure, <laughs> to be honest, I kind of forget now. I think that's the the setting that you want. <clears throat> if uh, you're when you attach a flash, I believe that's going to give you the uh, the ambient as well, um, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. Anyway, I have it on. I think that's what it does. I <laughs> honestly I can't remember, guys. It's been too long since I've messed with that. Um, it's one of those settings where you just set it once, you never really mess with it again. Um, and then auto review, you've got to set the two seconds, but that's completely up to you. So this is going to be where you're going to go in to change all of your custom keys, like your C1, C2, AF on, AEL, your control wheel and all that. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Uh, this is also where you go and set your function menu settings that will be in here, but we're going to go past that and <clears throat> we'll get to that in a minute. Dial setup, this is for your front dial up in the very front and then your rear dial back here. So uh, by default, I'm pretty sure this one is shutter speed and the front one is aperture. I came from or I came from Canon. I was used to having this front wheel up here being shutter speed. So when I got this camera, I basically set it up to uh, be the reverse so that the shutter speed is the front setting and then aperture is the rear setting. Um, so that's what I do there. And then this is if you wanna flip the direction of the spin of the wheel, but um, regardless, that's how I've got that set up. Custom operation to um, audio signals are generally off. I usually don't have those turned on. I pretty much just leave them off all the time. Lock operation parts 
So I've got this set to all, you know what, I'm gonna make this a separate video. So this is a, a feature that really pisses me off on Sony. So that might be a whole nother, whole nother video. Um, but I have it set to all, but to be honest, I don't really use the lock operation feature on this. So, but we'll talk more about that maybe in another video. Network, you can skip, network, yeah, playback. Not really much to say about in here. I think the only thing I'll mention is, so for enlarged initial initial positions, so that's when you hit the review button to go review your images. And then if you hit the, the button up here, which is the AF on, it's also the zoom button to zoom into your images. What it will do is it'll automatically zoom into whatever's in focus for an image. So typically on a wedding day, if I'm trying to check focus, um, so I'm gonna zoom into the image, I really wanna zoom into whatever's in focus. So it'll, when I hit this button, it'll automatically zoom into wherever the focus is set. So typically for a wedding, I'm trying to focus on people's faces. So if I hit the zoom button on an image when I'm reviewing it, and if it doesn't go to their face, I know it's not in focus. Um, if it does go to their face, then I can better assess how in focus it is um, and go from there. So that's something I do with that. Uh, playback page three, um, anything here? Yeah, display rotation I have set to off. Normally it's set to auto. Basically what that is, is when you go to review your images, it'll take horizontal or it'll take vertical images and it'll make them appear horizontal in the frame, but you get a lot of wasted space. I turn it off, that way my vertical images just take up the full width of the screen or the LCD, whatever you wanna call it. Um, and then that way I can see the full image rather than a smaller um, rotated version of it. Um, but that's not super important. Anyway, uh, playback page four, nothing there. Uh, moving on, uh, monitor brightness. I have set the sunny weather. It just helps with being able to see the uh, the the LCD a little bit better. Viewfinder brightness is set to manual negative one. You can't really see it through here. You actually have to look through the viewfinder. But I have that set to negative one for brightness. I turn it down a little bit. Um, color temp, no change, no change with the rest of any of this stuff here. Uh, page two here. We've got display quality. I've got that set to high. Power save, start time one auto power off, standard. If you're having issues with your camera overheating during video, um, this is where you can go and set it to high. I've never had any overheating issues, so I just leave it to set the standard. Um, moving on, touch panel pad. I have it set up, but I barely use this. Um, essentially, that's for being able to use the touch screen for finding your focus point, either using the viewfinder or, or the LCD. Again, not something I really use very often, but um, the main reason why I don't use it is I feel like the the sensitivity, it's, there's too much of a delay, there's like a lag, and uh, the when you're trying to track the, the autofocus point with your thumb or whatever finger on the LCD, uh, it's just, it's too laggy, and I always find myself missing where I wanna place it. The, like the Canon EOS R does a really, really good job at it. I find it very, very smooth, it's very intuitive. Um, there's not nearly as much of a lag, you can really place your focus point right where you want it. Um, maybe someday when Sony finally decides to update their shitty LCDs and have a better touch screen in here, hopefully we'll get that improved. But for right now, I don't find it very useful. I don't really like using it. Um, nothing else really in the rest of the setup, I don't believe. Yeah, we're gonna skip the rest of that. So now we're into my menu. So I've got a few things set up in here and we're kind of doing this in reverse, I guess. But the way I look at my menu is this is kind of like the third level of settings that I really need to get to. So these are things that I'll probably change like once during the day for a wedding. Um, my function menu right here, everything that's in this menu is kind of the things that I might need to change like two or three or a handful of times throughout the day. And then all of the external buttons like my AF on, my AEL, C1, C2, C3, all those. Those are the settings or the, the things I need to get to like just multiple times throughout the day over and over and over again. That's the way I kind of look at that um, as far as rationale. But anyway, um, I digress. So my menu, the first thing you have in here is record media settings. Uh, this is where you're gonna be able to change from say writing to one card to writing to both cards. So before one day, I'll go ahead and, and change it to sort raw and JPEG and then you'll see slot one, I get raw files, slot two, the JPEGs will get written to that. Um, right now, I've only got one memory card in the camera, so I'm leaving it to standard, but that's where you would make that setting change, and I do that pretty much before every single wedding, um, and I make sure that's all good to go. Again, file format we talked about earlier, um, RAW and JPEG. Sometimes I'll just go back to RAW, depending on what I'm shooting, but uh, that's I've got that in there in case I need to make that change. I've got my time lapse, time lapse feature in here, so I can get to that quickly if I want to, although, to be honest, I barely use it. Again, I've got the flash mode in here, and this is, again, so that I can change to rear curtain sync if I wanna play around during the reception with flash. Um, so that's why that's in there. 
get back to my menu here. Zebra settings, again, if I, if I wanna turn the zebras off or if I wanna change anything about the zebra settings, I can do that pretty quickly. And again, this is that feature we talked about earlier, the switch vertical horizontal AF area. That's again for turning your camera up and down and changing your autofocus point. So again, that's in here in case I wanna turn it off, but it pretty much just always lives um, with AF point only. Uh, second page, I got face registration. To be honest, I think I've only ever used this like once. I should probably just go ahead and remove it from here. That's basically where you try to prioritize specific faces throughout a day. Um, not something I really honestly use too much. I'm not, there's probably people that could talk more thoroughly about it who use it more often. Auto review, sometimes I'll turn auto review off, uh, but most of the time it's on two seconds, but I do have it in here in case I need to get to it. Date time setup, uh, you would think that maybe this would be a setting that you really only have to change once when you first get your camera. But again, for weddings when you're dealing with multiple shooters, like two shooters, three shooters, me, uh, a second photographer, a videographer, whatever it may be, uh, but primarily just for me and my second shooter, I wanna make sure that all of our cameras are synced in terms of date and time. That way, when I import all those images into Lightroom and I'm going through the gallery, it's gonna be very chronological. It's not gonna be jumping around where like I'm, because otherwise what'll end up happening is like, my second shooter's camera will be like an hour ahead of mine because maybe they have it taken into account daylight savings and you'll be in the stage where you're editing or calling and I'm looking at, you know, a getting ready photo followed by a ceremony photo followed by another getting ready photo followed by a ceremony photo. And when everything's out of order like that, it just makes the calling and the editing process take forever. So um, again, I try to do that. It just saves me time in the end. HDMI settings is in here only for video purposes. Occasionally when I'm uh, filming stuff, you can go in here and you can change the HDMI info display to on or off. And that basically just changes between um, recording what you see in a viewfinder versus just re using the camera as um, a video camera. Um, so that's in there. Finder monitor, again, we talked about that. That's just this feature for automatically switching between Though sometimes I'll turn it off if I'm doing like a weird angle and I keep triggering the viewfinder by accident. And then at, finally at the bottom here, we've got ISO auto minimum shutter speed. Um, it's grayed out right now because I'm not in um, auto ISO, but we'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, and that's really gonna be it for this menu. That's the end of my menu and the, that's the end of this menu here. Let's, uh, let's hop out of here and let's talk about some of the external settings as far as the buttons go. So at the, up at the very top up here, I've got C1 and C2. If I hit C1, you'll see that it's white balance. Pretty sure this is the factory uh, position of C1. Um, right now it's set to auto. Usually in a, during a wedding day, I'll be on like a custom white balance like down here and I'll just change it manually. And that's mostly because I like the look of my viewfinder or my LCD being a little bit warmer than it actually is. I just find it's more pleasant to look at throughout the wedding day. And also it's just nice to have a consistent color temperature rather than it changing every time you change the direction of your camera. <clears throat> but for this video, I've just got it set to auto. Um, so that's that. Um, C2, which is also up here right next to it. If I press that, I'm gonna get my focus area. So right now it's in flexible spot large. I would say most of the day I'm in like flexible spot large or medium. Every now and again, I'll drop down to small, um, but usually it's gonna be large or medium. Um, I also regularly use focus area zone. Uh, so this is basically, it's like flexible spot. It's just a much bigger um, box. Now, to be honest, what I wish Sony would do is I wish they would take zone and flexible spot and just mix it together, just make it one, um, one setting. Um, cause I find that large is a little bit too small for a lot of cases. And then I find that zone is too big in a lot of cases. So I wish they would just like combine zone with flexible spot and then make the, and like have like a large right now is the biggest. I wish then they would just make like a, an extra large and then like an extra, extra large, or I don't know, make this one <clears throat> extra small, make this one small, make this one medium, and then have like one, have a large that's above that. And then maybe make, um, the zone size box, call that extra large. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, it's something stupid. I don't really know why they do that. I wish we had a better, more logical layout there. Uh, wide, I don't use this very often in a wedding day. I'll mostly use it when I'm just taking photos of an individual or the couple themselves and there's really no distractions in the background. Uh, trying to use something like focus area wide during like say a reception or a ceremony, it, it's really just not the best for a wedding day. There's gonna be too many faces and distractions in the background. The camera is gonna be too likely to focus on something that you don't want it to. So for like really busy scenes where there's lots of people in it, I'm almost certainly gonna be in flexible spot, large or medium. And then what I'll do is I'll just move my focus point around in the frame wherever I need it to be and restrict where the camera is looking for focus that way. Um, so that's how I do that. 
Uh, moving on, so C3 is gonna be over here. Um, if you press on that, you're gonna get to your focus mode. Right now it's in continuous autofocus. I think I mentioned earlier in the video, I do like 99.5% of my day in continuous autofocus. And then if I'm not in continuous, I go down to manual and I'll use manual focus if I'm having trouble maybe uh, with a macro shot or if I have a lot of foreground elements and the camera's struggling to find focus because of that. I'll switch down to manual really quick and then um, and, and do that. Now C4 is gonna be down here. It also doubles as the trash can. Um, so the trash can function is only when you're in playback. So if you're just in normal shooting mode, it's just a custom function button. And this one, it doesn't really do much. It just turns touch operation on and off. Um, so that's how I have that set up. Most of the time it's an off, but if you turn it on, that's gonna give you the ability to uh, like touch to um, set your focus point or touch the drag and move your focus point. Um, so that's what that is. But for the most part, it's usually just gonna be set to off. That way I'm not bumping my focus point all over the place. Um, all right, so that's it for the custom buttons. Now, if we go up to like AF on, um, so for me, AF on is not AF on. Again, like I mentioned earlier in the video, I don't do back button focus. I, I kind of do something more akin of a reverse back button focus. So rather than, than this being set to AF on, this is actually set to AF lock. And I'll use AF lock, let's say like there's like something that happens really quickly and maybe the framing is off to the left, but my focus point is on the right of the frame and I don't really feel like I have enough time to move the thumbstick over. I wanna like be able to capture that moment really quickly. I'll just move my, I'll basically just move this point over my subject, grab focus, hold down auto focus lock, lock that focus in place, then recompose, and then shoot my frames until I have enough time to go ahead and move this focusing point around. So for me, it's kind of like a reverse back button focus. Rather than triggering autofocus, I actually lock autofocus with it. Um, same thing like you would do like with the autofocus lock on a lens. It's just not that all of my lens, not all of my lenses actually have an AF lock button on them. So I just permanently assign it to be the AF on button. Um, right now, AEL auto exposure lock is actually just auto exposure lock. I don't have it assigned to anything specific other than that. Um, back in the day before uh, the real-time IAF was released with the firmware upgrade, I used to use this to trigger IAF, uh, but now that that's not something that you have to turn on and off. It's just on all the time. It's just I'm not really using it for anything in particular. Um, if we come down here to the scroll wheel, uh, so the scroll wheel itself will actually change the aperture itself. Um, I do that because that's just what I was used to on Canon before I switched over to Sony, so I just I made that change when I, when I jumped into the a7 III. Um, ISO is going to be a right press of the control wheel. So if I press here, you'll get into the ISO settings and you can change your ISO here. Um, if I go into, if I press up on the scroll wheel, you're gonna get to all your different displays. So you got my level, I've got this mess of a display, I've got this mess of a display, and then you've got nothing. And if I go one more time, you get the histogram. Um, I pretty much live in this view with the histogram all day long. Same thing inside the viewfinder. Um, it's a bare viewfinder, but I do have the histogram turned on and that's really it. Uh, left press on the control wheel and we get into drive mode. Again, I'm mostly in single shooting all day, but I will switch over to continuous for things like the first look or if there's any sort of like really fast paced moment where I really wanna catch, catch an action, like maybe like the bouquet toss, garter toss, that sort of thing. And most of the time I'm gonna be in continuous mid. Um, high and high plus are a little bit overkill for me. And then low is just a little bit too slow. So for the most part, I live in continuous shooting mid if I am using it. Or again, like I said, most of the time I'm in single shooting. Um, so that's that. If I press down on the, on the scroll wheel down here, it's actually gonna punch me into APS-C mode. Um, so basically just crops in one and a half times. Now that's something I used to use quite a bit. I've gotten away from doing it and now my preference is really just to, to crop in after the fact. Um, Cause right now, if you crop in on the A7R3, I think you get like an 18 megapixel image that results from that. On the A7 III, I think it's like a 12 megapixel image. So you do, get, you do lose quite a bit of uh, quality by doing that. Um, so at the end of the day, like I'll usually use it to check my framing, but um, if I absolutely feel like I need to punch in and I know I'm gonna wanna punch in later on, like it's fine, I just leave it and I just know that I'm gonna crop in after the fact, um, but that's that. Um, so for the center button, I if you press on the center button, I'll actually go into manual focus mode. Uh, you don't really see it here doing anything because there's really nothing for it to focus on. Um, but if you press on that center button, it is set to change to manual focus. Um, so there's that. Um, what else do we have back here? Uh, that's really kind of looking like that's it. Um, one note that I will say is, so if you're an astute observer, you'll notice that this is aperture and this is aperture. Both of these both of these wheels back here, this one and this one, both do the same thing. And uh, to be honest, I wish I could reassign this wheel to be ISO. Uh, that's what I wanted to do when I first got the camera, but unfortunately you can't specifically assign uh, this button. They're both 
So you've got this front wheel and this back wheel. They're both basically going to be either shutter or aperture, and that's only you can flip the rever you can flip the order of them, and that's really the only thing you can do. You can't assign anything else to either one of these. Um, I think on the A7R4 you can, and probably the A9 Mark II, but unfortunately A7 III and R3 uh, these are kind of locked in. There's really nothing you, you can do there. Um, so yes, yeah, so anyway, so that's most of those external settings. Let's go into the function menu. So in here I've got a few redundant things. I've got uh, drive mode. Uh, focus mode it shouldn't be okay. So right now it's telling me that it's in manual focus, and that's because I pressed the center button. So if I press it again and then go into the menu system, it should open it back up, which it does. All right, so drive mode again, I've got that in there. My focus mode, focus area. So a little bit of redundancy there, but it's nice to have those um, quick access as well. Uh, peaking is set to on, so when I do go into manual focus, peaking is just automatically there. Um, zebra displays, again, like I said, those are on, but if I want to turn it off, I can do that very quickly in here. Uh, let's see, I've got my standard creative style. Don't really, again, mess with that too much, but if I ever do want to use a different creative style, I can. Picture profiles, again, are also in here if I want to change them for movies uh, or for filming. Uh, interval shooting, I've got that option set up in here if I want to do time lapses. Subject, de subject detection. So if I want to change it to animal or human, I don't know why I really have that in there. I never use it for animals, but whatever. Center lock on AF, I've got that in here in case I want to use it. To be honest, I don't use it very often, but it is there. Um, and then I do have my option to turn on silent shooting for any sort of moment, moments throughout the wedding day where I want to be a little bit quieter. And then audio signals, occasionally I'll turn them on, but for the most part, they live in the off position. Um, and that's really pretty much everything for the, the function menu. Now, one thing that I'm looking forward to with... Uh, Eventually, hopefully when the a7 IV comes out and then maybe the a7R4 if I ever feel like upgrading to that, is they actually have two function menus. I think they're just stacked on top of each other. They've got one for video and one for photo. Um, so that's a nice touch. Hopefully they'll maybe even add that as a firmware update at some point, um, but I'm not gonna hold my breath on that. Um, so that's it for the function menu. Um, so the only other thing I wanna talk about, we talked about very briefly um, earlier in the day is the ISO auto shutter speed. So that is for when I'm shooting in aperture priority. Also, that's something else I don't think I mentioned. Uh, pretty much for the entire wedding day, I'm gonna be in manual mode. And that has nothing to do with me thinking that you have to be in manual mode to be a professional photographer. It's not that at all. Like It's just like when I got started in photography, I was very adamant about shooting exclusively manual just so I could get as comfortable with changing my settings as possible, um, as quickly as possible. And I just never really tried anything else. I never really went back to shutter or aperture priority or any of the other auto modes. I just stayed in manual and I'm comfortable with it. Um, and it's just what I prefer. I certainly don't think you have to be in manual mode to be a professional photographer. I think that's a little bit stupid. And Ed, to be honest, I think for weddings, there's a big um, argument to be said for shutter priority and aperture priority being very useful modes for weddings. Um, you know, I know plenty of photographer, photographers who are really great at what they do and they use aperture priority. So I'm um, not making any sort of judgments there. I'm not making any sort of statements there. It's just the way I shoot. And um, But every now and again, depending on the situation, I will find myself switching over to aperture priority. And when I do, there's a couple unique settings that I have for this. All right, and then when I am in aperture priority, usually the first thing I do is I go over to ISO and I change this to auto. Um, there we go. And then I usually set my minimum ISO to 100 and my maximum to 6400. Um, that's usually a safe place to live there. And then let's go back in the menu and then there's one more function or feature that we kind of skipped over earlier. And that's this ISO auto minimum shutter speed. If you remember earlier, this was grayed out, now it's not. So if you go into here, you can actually control what your minimum shutter speed is going to be when you're in auto ISO. Um, I like to set mine to 1 2 50th of a second. I find it's a good uh, balance. Uh, 1 500th of a second is a little bit too fast and uh, 1 1 25th is a little bit too slow for weddings in my opinion. Um, obviously there's times throughout the day when 1 25th would work fine, but to be safe, uh, 1 2 50th is usually uh, where I wanna be. Um, <clears throat> and then that'll help control that shutter speed. And then it will only ever drop below 1 2 50th of a second if the ISO needs to go above 6400, if that makes sense. Um, but anyways, that's how I have it set up whenever I am in um, aperture priority. So if uh, if aperture priority is something that you plan on using, uh, that could be a good starting off point for uh, for you guys. And, uh, and really with that said, uh, at that point, that's really kind of it. That's everything that 
um, I really wanted to go through as far as how I set up my a7 III or my a7R III. And, and so yeah, hopefully you guys found that somewhat useful if you're uh, just jumping over to Sony or you're just jumping into weddings. Um, I think this will be a good place for you guys to, to get started. Um, obviously, like I said earlier in the video, there's no right or wrong way to set up your camera. It's really just a matter of what works for you and what features and settings you need to get to the most and the quickest. Um, but yeah, if you're just getting started, I think this will be a good place for you to uh, to begin and uh, and then work from from there to develop your own setup. Um, but otherwise, guys, again, yeah, hopefully you guys found the video useful. If you did, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Um, if you got questions or comments, anything about settings or, or whatever, really anything down below, um, yeah, leave those down below. And then otherwise, uh, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And that's going to be it for this video, guys. So until next time, stay safe, keep shooting, and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.